Hi, my name is Kari Mendez, and I'm a principal consultant with Red Hat. And my name is Greg Tinsley, and I'm a senior consultant with Red Hat. Today, we're going to talk about OpenShift 4 and security. So Kari, security, we think about the product. But really, security is a joint responsibility between the product, the users, and the business's capabilities, right? Right. Now, OpenShift 4 has a number of features that we can use to enforce our security posture. We have this software development lifecycle. How can we get like this secure software development lifecycle? Right. So if we refer to the diagram, we've got an image of a couple of pipelines here. So typically, we talk a lot about the application pipeline. But what we need to consider is that we need trusted images as inputs to this pipeline. So for that, we're going to talk about this hardening pipeline. We're going to focus here. So this is our trusted and secure image container supply chain. So before we can even build a container image, we're going to need our ingredients, our secret sauce to get the job done. So that means we're going to need a container image specification file. We're going to need any binary artifacts that may be required to create the image. And we're going to need any uh, trusted images that are going to serve as a base for our secure image. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to pull UBI or universal base images from Red Hat. These can be either Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 or 8. And the real advantage that these give you is that you can build these on whatever Linux platform you want. It doesn't require subscription. You don't need to run these on a rel base image. So once we've got all of these ingredients together, we can go ahead and build the image. So we can use Builda to gather these different ingredients and create our ultimate image. Once our image has been created, we can then use Scopio, which is a tool that allows us to copy images, into our trusted image repository, which can be something like Red Hat Quay. So this candidate image is now going to be sitting in our repository, and we'll move on to our next step in the pipeline, which is going to be to scan this. So we've applied our hardening. We need to scan it make sure it's truly secure. So we can use tools like OpenSCAP to do the scan, and there are a ton of third-party tools we can use as well for scanning. Once the scanning is complete, we'll save those artifacts into another repository. So this will be metadata, JSON files telling us whatever potential vulnerabilities were found. And then next, we'll have some quality gates, some automated gates that will check the results of these scans. So for instance, if we find a severe vulnerability within our image, we'll fail the gate, and we'll exit out of our pipeline. We'll go back, update our files, and try to get past this vulnerability. And assuming we get past this step, finally, we're going to perform a smoke test. So during the smoke test, we want to make sure that we didn't harden our image to the point that it just doesn't work anymore. So there are a couple of different ways we can smoke test. One approach would be to use something like Podman to do a Podman run to stand up our image, make sure it comes up and it stays up. Another option would be to deploy the image into OpenShift, after which point we can do several tests external to the image just to make sure it's behaving as we expect. Once that completes successfully, we can go back into our image repository, and we mark that candidate image as a golden image. And at this point, that image is available as an input to our application pipeline. Yeah, so I, I kind of spent a lot of time talking about the application level side of things. But of course, we've got an entire platform that we have to be concerned about. So what types of things can we do at the platform level? So at the platform level, we're talking about like system administrator view. They are concerned about access inside of the cluster. Uh, we're thinking about the idea or the principle of least privilege and separation of duties. Now, OpenShift has a, uh, a feature called role-based access control, where we can determine what a subject can perform on a particular object inside of OpenShift. Subject like a user, a user that interacts with the API. We can add permissions on what they can do inside of the cluster. But we also have service accounts. Now, service accounts exist all throughout the cluster performing tasks. Uh, and then we have groups. Now with groups, groups can kind of mimic your, your environment, like your DF team, your QA team, a database team, pretty much any kind of way you want to slice it. So we set up a group. We can add, add permissions to the group. And then we can assign users to these groups that can inherit these permissions. But sometimes we have a case where a group is not the most efficient situation or the most efficient way to apply permissions. So we can create roles. For instance, if you're a provisioner, and the provisioner exists amongst uh, along uh, different groups. Then we can apply a permission or this, this role to the groups, and we can also apply roles to users individually. Now it's not all about users. We have things running. We have pods running inside of our uh, cluster. Well, we have something called security context constraints that we can apply to a pod, and we can apply permissions that way. So 
The beautiful thing about role-based access control is that we can apply uh, authentication access cluster-wide, or we can do it on a particular project. For instance, if we have a project that needs that has some sensitive data or application data running through it, we can harden that particular project individually. All right, yeah, that sounds great. I think the, the major outcome of this talk is that we really have to take a holistic view of how, of how we secure the system. And we've touched on a few points, sort of key points in the whole process, but there's a whole lot more. We just hit on the tip of the iceberg. So how can people get more information on you know, other processes we need, and in particular, how to get started with all of this? Well, that's pretty easy to do. All you have to do is reach out to your Red Hat account executive and set up a discovery session. But that's not it. We have redhat.com slash services where you can learn all about our offerings that can help you along your OpenShift security journey. Thank you for watching our video today. Have a great one.